Hey guys, Oli here. The first time I opened Contact, I knew it was a software sampler meant to play virtual instruments, but I wasn't sure if I was using it the right way. There are so many options with the routing and all that. So I thought I would make a quick video to show you how to get started in no time. In this video, I'll show you the two main ways to use Contact in your DAW, as well as two power tips to make sure that you have minimal RAM usage and fast loading times for libraries. But first, why Contact? Well, it's basically the industry standard and you can play basically any sound virtual instruments all under one engine. It can be loaded as a standalone app or you can load it in your DAW if you want to also record performances and create MIDI tracks out of your software sampler. But why would you buy Contact if you can use a free version called Contact Player. While Contact 7 plays any NKI or NKS format library, Contact Player plays only specific licensed contact libraries, meaning that the software developer paid a licensing fee to native instruments for the user to be able to use the engine without having to pay for the full version of Contact 7. If you want to know if an instrument or library can be used with Contact Player, which is the free version of Contact, you'll find a badge in the product description that tells you with which version of Contact it can work with. And if the library works with Contact Player, you can be sure it's gonna work with Contact 7. And when you buy Contact 7, you're gonna have access to nearly 900 instruments with 43 gigabytes of samples and sound. Contact Player will come in a bundle if you install Complete Start, which will also give you some libraries, some effects. So that's a pretty cool way to get started and get used to the interface. There are two main ways to load Contact in your DAW. The first one is to load one library in one instance of the plugin and that's what we'll do first because it's the easiest way and it's really easy to manage like this. So once you load contact, this is the first thing you're going to see. This is the browser window. So on the left side is all the libraries that are installed on your system. On the right side here is a preview of that specific library that's selected. So let's say I'm clicking here on the left for these very own drums. If I click here on the right, you're going to hear a preview of that specific library. If you want to load that library and see all the possibilities, you simply double click here and then you're going to switch to library view. Note that you can always go back between browser and library view by clicking contact or by clicking library. And the library view is where you can check out all the sounds that are included in that library. And here you have the keyboard map. So if you don't see it available, you can select and deselect the keyboard here. And this will give you an idea of which keys are associated with which sounds. And in specific libraries, this is very important because not all keys will actually play stuff. The layout of every library will be different while the top menu here will always be the same doesn't matter which library you're using. So on the right here, we have volume output. We have panning. Here we have tuning, solo, mute. And here we have something very useful that we'll talk about a bit later, which is the purge function. And finally, on the left here are all the presets that are already coming for free with every single library that you install. If I load a different library, you can see here how the layout is very different. And it's basically showing you what keys are doing what type of action. So sometimes one key will be one loop. In the case of the specific sampler playing, the blue layout will actually activate four different keys at the same time. And if you're playing the higher octaves, it will only trigger one single sound. So it's very important to always have the keyboard view activated to make sure that you're not missing anything from the specific layout related to your library. Every library window is very different. For example, some of them you can drop samples inside and some others you can extract loop and drop them in your MIDI track. For example, in this one, the blue keys are basically loops while the red keys will change the note of that loop. So if you don't have a full size 88 keys keyboard, it's very important to see that specific map. And you can always use the octave shift buttons to change the octave and make sure that you can access all those sounds. The second way to use contact is to use multiple instruments in one instance of contact. 
and this will save some of your computer's resources, especially RAM. So the way to do that is to create MIDI tracks, different MIDI tracks for each of the instrument, and basically route the MIDI channel, so MIDI channel 1, MIDI channel 2, to each instrument. So you're going to see here in the top menu, MIDI channel 1, MIDI channel 2, and that way each MIDI track here will basically trigger each instrument in contact. So if we deactivate our second MIDI track, we'll only hear the first loop. And let's activate the second track here. So you can see that if you're programming lots of virtual instruments, this can save a lot of computer resources because you're loading only one instance of contact for 10 instruments instead of having 10 instances of contact running one instrument each. The only thing is you need to properly set up the routing to make sure that the information gets to the software sampler. The first power tip to make sure that contact runs as fast as possible is to install all your libraries on an external solid state drive connected to your computer via Thunderbolt 4 protocol. That way you'll make sure that you have the fastest read speed for your external device and that your libraries will load very, very fast compared to, for example, a 5,400 RPM hard drive, which will definitely slow down your loading times, especially if you're talking about really large libraries that were sampled in a high resolution. The second power tip to save on RAM would be to use the purge button, which is located right here. So once you decided what type of sound you want to use in your session, and the samples are loaded according to that, you can simply click purge all samples. If I purge all samples, we're gonna basically reset all the memory usage. And what contact will do is only load the samples associated with the specific sounds that we are using and the articulations associated with that. So in this case, let's play the loop that we heard before. So we're only using 10 megabytes instead of 300 or 400. So this comes in very handy. And the more samples we're gonna use, let's say use a different note. You can see here the memory usage goes up. But since we're not using a lot of articulations and a lot of different samples, we're using just barely 15 megabytes. So that can be a huge saver for your RAM if you're running short or if you're using a lot of stuff in your sessions. Now that you know how to operate Contact 7 properly, you'll definitely want to learn how to install third-party libraries from other software developers. So that way you can really expand your sonic palette with different sounds. In this next video, I show you exactly how to do it in no time. Hoping to see you there.